Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this. This is Ann Phoenix from St. Joseph Catholic School in Libertyville, and we are excited to welcome your child and you back for the 21-22 school opening. Please join me in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Creator of body, mind, and spirit, you have sent the spirit of wisdom and knowledge to guide your people in all their ways. At the beginning of this new school year, we implore your mercy. Bless the students, teachers, staff, and parents of St. Joseph Catholic School as we work together to grow in faith, hope, and in love. Expand the horizons of our minds that we may grow in wisdom, understanding, and in knowledge, and deepen our commitment to seek the truth of your ways. We ask this in your name, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. I want to welcome you back for an exciting year at St. Joseph Catholic School. Last year, we did have a successful year of in-person learning where we opened the school in August of 2020 and we stayed open all school year through June of 2021. We did have eight COVID cases, either um, a student or a teacher or a staff member, whomever. Uh, we did have eight cases last year. However, we were able to um, lock those down to none of those cases originated from within the school. We also did not have any spread of COVID within the school with those eight cases. Not another student or staff member caught it from the person who had it. So we really had an awesome, successful year. We did offer remote learning or live streaming in most classes last year. Um, we are not doing that this year. Um, it's just not necessary. And quite frankly, it was completely exhausting. And so that's not going to be offered this year. Um, however, after last year, we have so much confidence going into this year. It's going to be a great school year. Homeroom assignments. So this Friday, August 13th at noon, you are able to log into your PowerSchool account to see where your child is placed for their homeroom assignment. New families, you're going to be mailed, not emailed, regular um, mail, a, a login credential this week so you can check PowerSchool. Returning families, you're going to log into your um, account that's already created. If you do have any questions, please email Mrs. Koenig about um, the access to PowerSchool. And as a reminder, we do have a PowerSchool app that I encourage you to put on your device. You'll be able to check your homeroom placement, um, but also throughout the year, you're gonna be able to check grades, um, attendance. Um, you'll be able to see if your child is missing any work, any of that stuff. So PowerSchool is a good thing to put on your cell phone. Um, after a lot of discussions, we have decided to go ahead and we are going to host your Meet the Teacher Day. We, we really missed this last year, and so we are excited to welcome our students back for Meet Your Teacher Day. So Tuesday, August 17th, please join us at 8.30 a.m. at Mass. Um, all pro COVID protocols must be followed within the church, and um, but we would be excited if you would join us at 8.30. Then, those students with the last name of A through L, 910 to 955, you're gonna come on in and you're gonna drop off all your school supplies, meet your teacher, organize your locker, you're gonna pick up your pick my kids sign. That's for students with the last name of A through L. The other half of the alphabet, you're gonna be at the park at that time, meeting um, up with old friends and you're gonna be connecting with some new friends. Then we're gonna flip flop that. At 10 o'clock, we're gonna have the students with the last name of M through Z come into the school while the students with A through L as a last name are gonna be at the park. Parents, if you've not gotten your child's school supplies yet, you're able to find those on our webpage. Just go to the About Us link and then Parent Quick Links. You'll see all the school supplies there. Uh, first day of school is Thursday, August 19th. We are starting at our normal school time, 7.30, but we are dismissing at 11 a.m. Parents, you're going to want to be on campus if you're picking up by about 10.50, 10.45. Please pull up to the staging area, which I'll go over in a few minutes. Um, but st school dismisses on that first day at 11 a.m. Full uniforms are required. Check out our webpage if you need information on that. Drop-off begins at 7.10 using the exact same arrival process as we used last year. We're just not doing the health screening. We don't need to do it this year. Um, parents did an awesome job last year of keeping their sick children home. Please do the same this year. If you have unvaccinated siblings in the uh, family, you're going to keep those kiddos home as well. 
students cannot be dropped off prior to 710. We don't want a bunch of students hanging out in the lobby at one time because then there's potential exposures. The exception is going to be school buses that happen to arrive early. We will make do with that. Um, as a reminder, if your child does wear a, or if your child does ride a school bus, they have to be masked on that bus. We will have safety patrol students outside this year, seventh and eighth graders who are volunteering to get up extra early to come and help our students in and out of the cars this year. Parents, we are asking your help to have your student be on time. What that means is your child should be walking in the front doors of the school no later than 7.23 a.m. We want our students enough time to walk to their classroom, unload their backpack, put their lunch away, get their books for first period, and head on in and have a seat. It would be really awesome if they had a couple minutes to connect with their friends to socialize, uh, but they need to be walking into seven th at 7.23, not at 7.30. We kind of look at this as like a if a parent had a business meeting that started at 7.30, you wouldn't walk into the building at 7.30 for that business meeting. You're going to come a couple minutes early, drop your stuff off at your desk, get your computer, your briefcase, whatever you need, and head on to the meeting so you have, uh, you're ready to start. It's the same thing here. Walking in late is a complete disruption to the other students, um, not just to your student, but also to the teacher. So please have your child walking in at 7.23 a.m. Three-year-old preschool. So preschool students, you are not starting on the regular uh, day that our K through eight students are starting. On Monday, August 23 through the 25th, we are gonna ho uh, host orientation. Parents, you've already received an email about that. First day for three-year-olds is Friday, August 27th. For drop-off, you're gonna pull up a couple minutes before 8 a.m. and just at about 8 a.m., walk your three-year-old preschool, preschooler to the front door of the school. Your teacher will meet you there and they will have your child come in. We are asking the parents to just wait outside the front door of the school, come up right before eight o'clock. For pickup, pull up at 1025 to the front door of the school you're going to open your Pick My Kid app and click the word announce. That tells us that you're here on campus. Then just a couple minutes before uh, 1030, uh, walk up to the front door of the school and wait outside. Your teacher will bring your child to you and we will not dismiss your child until we make contact with you. Four-year-old preschool, same orientation, Monday through Wednesday. You've already received information on that. Your first day of school is Thursday, August 26th. Um, for the morning and full day session, drop off is by 7.30 using the drop off line. If you do have older siblings in the building, you can drop off a few minutes early uh, so that your older children are not late. Um, your child is gonna come on in though through the regular drop off line. If you are in the afternoon session, please pull up a few minutes before 11 and walk your child to the front door and just wait right outside your teacher will meet you outside right before 11 o'clock at the main lobby. Pickup procedures. At 10, 10.25, you wanna pull up. If, you are, if your child is done after the morning session, you're gonna pull up at our front door and click announce in your Pick My Kid app. And then at about 10.28, just walk to the front door of the school and wait outside. Your child's teacher will greet you there and they will give you back your child. Then at the end of the day, if your child leaves um, in the afternoon at two o'clock, you're gonna pull up to your designated area that was in Mrs. Lentino's email sent on July 30th. Please click announce in the Pick My Kid portal and you're going to wait in your car until the pickup or until the dismissal line starts. Again, reference July 30th email from Mrs. Lentino for information on that. It's important that you have that Pick My Kid app on your phone. As I said that, the Pick My Kid app, that tells your child, your child's teacher, and the school office how your child is getting home that day. So it's very important, anyone picking up your child, grandma, aunt, grandpa, a babysitter, they must have the Pick My Kid app on their phone, and they need to have the Pick My Kid sign that piece of paper that has your last name and your pick my kid number, they need to have that displayed on their passenger side window. If you're, if grandma picks up your child and they don't have the pick my kid app, we're going to make grandma pull around and go to the end of the line. So please, anybody who's picking up your child, they must have the pick my kid app on their personal device. 
the way this app works is this app tells us how your child is getting home every day. So parents, if let's say you're picking up your child at um, that day and all of a sudden you realize you cannot make it, you're going to go in and make a change be before 1.30. Maybe you're going to have your aunt, the aunt, the grandma, whomever. It, maybe it's a, a friend from the class. You can designate another, another parent to pick them up. Just go in the portal be before 1.30 and make that change. Do not call the school about the change and do not call your child's cell phone about the change. We will see the change in Pick My Kid. When you arrive on campus for pickup, you're going to click the word announce. That then sends a message to your teacher and to the office and to your child. Hey, I'm here. I'm ready to pick up my child. There's someone here for them. Be sure that your name and your pick my kid number is displayed on that piece of paper in the passenger side window and that it stays there till after you have pulled away from school. We have somebody out there with an iPad whose job it is to look at your name and number and say, okay, Johnny was picked up so I can dismiss them. If you take down that sign, we can't see who's leaving. And although by a couple weeks into school, we're pretty good at knowing who drives what car, it really makes the pickup line move a lot faster if you keep that, in, that sign in your window. So please make sure that it is there. This year, Governor Pritzker did have um, issue the mask mandate in the Archdiocese of Chicago. They have said that all schools have to follow that. So if you are in the building, your child, any visitor, parent, staff member, regardless of vaccination status, you have to wear a mask. No mask is required outside for anyone, regardless of the vaccination status. Um, and there's no distancing required outside. Same rules last year with masks, if it's reusable, um, please wash it every day if um, gaiters are permitted and please make sure your child has a couple masks in their backpack in case if they need to change them. Um, masks should not have any scary faces on it. Please just make sure it's a neutral mask. Uh, no um, political statements on masks. Um, all of those type of masks can stay home from school. Distancing in the room setup. So we are going to shoot for three feet of distancing in the classrooms um, whenever possible. Um, the guidelines do say that it should not in or interfere, though, with best academic practices. Outside, as I said, no distancing requirements. Last year, we did have to have the students seated in one direction. We couldn't use tables, and we had to follow strict cohorts. That is not in place for this year. We're able to bring back a bunch of things this year. Um, School-wide masses, we're only going to send half the school each week, though, because we need to make sure that um, we can follow all the distancing guidelines and still have um, all of our parishioners attend mass who wants to attend. So only half the, the school will attend each week. Um, also, with field trips, Camp Edwards folks from last year and this year, just hold out. I'm going to ask for more patience. Right now, we are allowed to do day trips. We are not allowed to have any overnight trips. So we'll be making some decisions shortly. Um, if we think we can do an overnight trip, we're going to hold off for that. But if we can't, we're going to look at some day trips that we can do. And hot lunch is definitely coming back this year. If you want to push pause, um, this short slide, it just shows a little bit of information about the differences between last school year and this school year. Quarantines and isolation. We're excited about this. The way that we have our quarantines are set up and the guidelines, we don't anticipate very many people having to quarantine this year. So I'm going to go over this high level. Um, we, in this email that, I, that you received, this presentation is our operating handbook as well. Please reference the operating handbook as that will give you greater information on quarantines and isolations. So if you're sick, the child's going to stay home from school, and so are their unvaccinated siblings. If your child gets sick at school, we will send them home as well as their unvaccinated siblings. If the symptoms are gone within 24 hours, send everybody back. If the symptoms last longer than 24 hours, then you either need to have that child seen by a doctor or they need to quarantine for 10 days. When they are seen by the doctor, the doctor is either going to give a COVID test if it's negative, you're going to upload your results and the child's going to come back. If, it's an, if they don't do a COVID test and it's an alternative diagnosis, just send us that in writing and your child is going to return to school. Any child that tests positive, 
regardless of your vaccination, you do have to stay home. Quarantines, no longer are we doing full class quarantines. So only non-vaccinated individuals who are within three feet of a positive individual are going to quarantine. This is pretty exciting for us. So what this means is that if you wear a mask the appropriate way, covering your mouth and your nose, and you maintain the distancing of the desks that we're asking for, you will, your child will not have to quarantine. Now, some middle school students, their masks accidentally fall down quite a bit. If theirs is one that always is falling down and all of a sudden there's a COVID case, that student is going to have to quarantine. So please make sure that you speak to your child about appropriately wearing the mask. If you have a, a, an older child who their mask is just not being worn correctly, I am going to send them home from school. Yes, I'll give them a gentle reminder. I'll even show them how to wear the mask appropriately, but there's only so much of that will do. We're just going to send your child home from school. Um, if they are vaccinated and you want to avoid a quarantine, you may upload your child's vaccination card. This is completely optional, but you may upload the card and your child would not have to quarantine if they are deemed as a close contact. Um, that it, it, We're encouraging families to upload vaccination cards now so that it will expedite the process of quarantines later. Anyone um, at home, if they're uh, family, somebody in the family test positive, all the non-vaccinated students have to stay home. Um, so if we do have quarantine due to a positive case or a close contact, we're going to look at the seating chart, who was around them. Then we're going to look at who was wearing their mask appropriately. Then we're going to say, okay, of these students, are any of them vaccinated? If we have proof they're vaccinated, they stay in school. If we don't have proof, they have to be sent home. So the way the quarantine is going to work this year, parents will be notified once the books are ready for pickup. Kindergarten through fourth grade parents will check the web page and you'll be able, your child will be able to do the schoolwork from home. I'm sure there will be an email from the teacher as well to the parent about any information, but your teacher's web page is going to be the vehicle to get the information. Students in fifth through eighth grade, they're going to check Google Classroom. Now, last year we did a lot of live streaming in our fifth through eighth grade classes. We are not doing that this year. What we're doing this year is the student is going to check the web page or Google Classroom and they're going to do the work from home. Let's say they're having trouble or they need clarification. They, the older students can email their teacher or if it's uh, younger students, parents can email the teacher and say, hey, I'm not understanding this for math or for science or for religion, whatever the class. I'd like to attend office hours today or tomorrow if possible. The teachers are going to host office hours between 2.10 and 2.30, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday, if it's pre-arranged. It must be pre-arranged because teachers are not going to automatically host office hours. It is important to note that office hours are only offered if it's a quarantine situation due to a positive case. If you're traveling, let's say to Disney or to Grandma's, we will not host office hours for that. This is only for people who we have deemed as positive or as a close contact. Again, the office hours must be pre-set up with the teacher by emailing that teacher. They are not going to automatically jump on. Travel quarantines. We have to follow the travel quarantines. We, are, we don't have a choice about this. So if you go to the Chicago Travel Advisory website, you're going to see states are divided into orange states and yellow states. If it's a yellow state and you travel there, your child can come back to school, no problem. If it's an orange state, if they're vaccinated, your child can return, no problem. If they're not vaccinated, they need to have either a COVID test or they have to quarantine for 10 days. If it's international travel, there's no guidelines because I apparently current guidelines state that in order to board a plane internationally, you have to have a COVID test. So those, those kiddos can come back to school. In the email that you received this presentation, there is an operating handbook. I advise you to please sit down and read that operating handbook. That's gonna go into greater detail of all of these rules. Please also share that operating handbook with your older children so they understand what's expected of them as well. 
So I've mentioned a couple of times um, this um, student vaccination card. This is completely optional. If you want to upload your child's vaccination card, you may do that. Only Mrs. Hein, Mrs. Wagner, and I will have access to the vaccination information. This is confidential, but it will help expedite any potential quarantine cases, whether it's a close contact or if your child is traveling. So if your child is um, deemed a close contact, we're going to check the list of vaccination cards that we have on file. If we have their vaccination card, your child is not going to have to quarantine. Or if your travel, child travels to, say, Florida right now, they will not have to quarantine if we have the vaccination card on file. Again, only Mrs. Wagner, Mrs. Hine, and I will have this information. Um, these are some really important links. So the first one is our operating handbook. That's all things COVID related. Please sit down with your older child and have them look at this handbook. They need to know the expectations so that if um, they are, let's say, considering traveling to a state, but they're not vaccinated, then they understand what that means as far as having a test or quarantining and able to be able to return. There's also the student and parent handbook. Um, that's all the nuts and bolts of the school, the expectations, the dress code. Take a look at that as well. We also have some of our technology links on here. We also have our grade level health requirements link on here. So each grade level, you may have certain medical documents that you must show. So for example, let's say you have to have updated immunization record on file in kindergarten or sixth grade. Check this because you have to provide that to the school. If we don't have that updated information by October 15th, your child cannot come to school on October 16th. Make your appointments now so that your child's um, attendance is not disrupted. They will not do log, log on for office hours in this situation because we're giving you plenty of time to have this information documented and on file. There's also a link if you would like to proactively upload your child's vaccination card. And if you're in a situation that you have to show your child's negative, there's also a link for that. We are still waiting for a little bit um, of additional information from the Office of Catholic Schools related to athletics. Once I have that information, we will create our St. Joe's operating handbook for athletics. I just don't have that quite yet. Finally, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, there, there's only one way you can operate a school during a pandemic, and that is if you have a lot of trust in your teachers and staff, in your students, and in your parents. Last year, it was amazing what our school community came together to do. This year, I know we're going to do the same thing. Just remember that every time you put your child in a situation unmasked, there is potential exposure, and that potential exposure then could be brought into the school. So we really all have to do our part to keep the school safe, to keep other students and staff safe, and to operate the school um, under the best circumstances, COVID-related, to limit the risk of any people getting COVID here at school. Last year, we had absolutely no spread of it in our school, and I have no doubt that this year is going to be just as successful. So parents and students, I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday, August 17th at Meet Your Teacher Day. And then for our first full day of school on the 19th, that's a Thursday, please come in full uniform. And again, your child should be walking in the doors by 723 to be on time. It really is going to be a great year. Before I leave, I just want to give a quick plug to our student, to our parent association. They have been killing it this summer, planning events for our students. We couldn't host events last year, and they are, they are working so hard to bring back fun activities. There's only one way those fun activities are going to work, and that's if every parent volunteers for at least one thing. So please go to our website, look at our SJSPA webpage, and reach out and ask to volunteer for at least one thing. We cannot have the same parents running every single event because they're gonna get burned out. And we just, we can't ask our staff to host every single um, event and run every event. We need our parent community to jump back in and do what you guys have done all these years in, in volunteering. That's what really makes our school community so special. So please check that out. We wanna have a great year together. And thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Please
please uh, read our operating handbook. It's on our webpage. It's also included in the email that you received this information. And I welcome you back for a great 21-22 school year. Thank you.